Now, the rest of the story. Willard Huntington Wright was headed for a nervous breakdown. Of course, he didn't know it. Content to remain at his typewriter 14 hours a day, a literary editor for one publication, a music critic for another, an art critic for still another, an author of ponderous scholarly books on the side. Incidentally, he was born in 1888 in Charlottesville, Virginia. Well-educated, well-traveled. At various times, he'd wanted to be an impressionist painter, a symphony conductor, but his gift was for writing. So he wrote. He wrote about painting and about conducting and even about writing. Between 1907 and 1923, he wrote art and music and literary criticisms for more than half a dozen publications. And in his spare time, he wrote nine books, as though he actually had spare time, the lack of which led to Willard's nervous breakdown. Oh, it was a real nervous breakdown. His doctors put him in bed, told him to stay there. But might I write, Willard asked. No, he may not write. He must do nothing to frazzle his already overstimulated nerves, not even serious reading. Willard was aghast, of course. He must be confined to bed with nothing to do at 34. So Willard's doctors proposed a compromise. He may read something like, uh, well, like detective stories. Something entertaining, but not overtaxing. And that's how Willard Huntington Wright, sophisticated scholar, became gradually, at first, and then fanatically interested in detective fiction. Exhausting his supply of his neighborhood bookseller, he then sent away for detective novels from all over the world, savored the subtleties of the mystery plots, the exquisite intricacies. Willard was more than two years confined to his bed, That's how serious his condition had been. But his convalescence was made tolerable by those myriad marvelous detective stories. And then one day Willard stopped reading them and started writing them. Under a pen name, of course, a respected cultural journalist, he was risking the scorn of his colleagues. Anyway, his first mystery novel sold out in a week. His second broke all the records for detective fiction, was translated into seven languages, even became a motion picture. Willard Wright would write a dozen more murder mysteries, each phenomenally successful. In fact, any one of his detective novels made more money than all of his serious books put together. And today, going on a hundred years later, encyclopedias and literary references hail the name of an American author, S.S. Van Dyne, creator of the classic sleuth, Philo Vance, Impressive array of detective novels, which inspired more than 15 movies. That's right. S.S. Van Dyne was Willard Huntington Wright, the music critic who never conducted an orchestra, the art critic who could not paint, the scholarly writer whose scholarly writing almost broke his brains. And by the way, all that literature the world quickly forgot even as it made Willard a wealthy man, for having fun. And by having fun, getting well. And now you know the rest of the story.